This is KZSU Stanford 90.1 FM, and I'm sitting here in one of Amman's gorgeous cafes with a writer, an intellectual, a force of his own, the one and only Maher Sadame, who I personally met last year and who has, in the past year alone, managed to publish in English the first English translation of one of his books. We're going to be talking to him about his literary journey and the latest book which is called Charisma Code currently available on Amazon. I strongly encourage you to take a look at the description that is available therein and uh, to stay in touch with us at the Arabology Show with any comments or any suggestions to Maher and we'll be glad to pass them along. Stay tuned when we return Maher Salami. And we are back with the one and only Maher Salami right here in Amman, Jordan. Maher, welcome to the Arabology Show. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and you realize you're being listened to live right now by listeners all over the San Francisco Bay Area. And through the podcast, inshallah, listeners around the world. And the reason I'm very excited to speak with you today is the publication, the English translation of Charisma Code, which is currently available on Amazon, my hand. Yes, yes. A brand new release and uh, on Kindle as well. Uh, can we talk a little bit about the title for those Americans who may not know? Catchy title, but what does it mean? Charisma Code is a name that describes the steps, the necessary steps to build your own charisma through building your own meanings. There is no charisma without meaning. And uh, I said it code because the meaning is the code of everything. Would you consider this to be sort of a, a book for leadership building? Actually, there is no charisma without leadership. Meaning is the code, the secret code of leadership and charisma itself. Leadership itself is a meaning. And uh, this dilemma of leadership that is going around the world, everybody, every writer, every researcher is trying to, to put his own definition. But I found myself that leaderships leadership itself has three steps or sometimes four steps depends on the individual first you have to build a dialogue between you and yourself then you have to excel managing yourself managing ideas managing emotions uh, managing passions and then you will reach a stage where you can execute things efficiently and professionally and this is the aim of leadership is execution at the end and execution demand skills and experience and understanding so the whole thing of leadership the whole component of leadership address the uh, definition of meaning because there is no meaning without skills, efficiency, professionalism, and there's no professionalism without meaning. What makes you, Maher Salami, an expert on this topic so that when people read it, what should they know about your background and what do you bring specifically to this earth? You know, Ramzi, I never uh, considered uh, myself an expert in, in this subject. I'm a researcher. And uh, what I have tried to do only is to answer hanging questions, trying to understand the question and the answers and see where it will lead us. Uh, what are the experience of other people? I personally wrote my experience, my observations on leadership. I've been traveling a lot. I've seen across cultural societies all over the world and uh, what I do is comparing the style of leadership an individual that I noticed in every culture that I visited or I lived in, in the Arab world, in Europe, in the United States and these comparisons made me reach my conclusions 
to address some very difficult questions. I noticed some of these questions in the description. The, the, the answers seem to be worth investigating within the book. But before I get to that, Maher, and just because I do know you personally, when we talk about experience, you've been in, the, in media. You have had an extensive career that led and culminated in the publication of this book in English translation this year. Could you take us a little bit through that, through the experience you've had dealing with people within media, outside of media, publications, and perhaps tie it in with your travels both in the East and the West? Actually, I was a student. And when I was a student, I was an activist. Through my experience of being activist, I saw met lots of people, some celebrities, some leaders, some student leaders. I've been there all over. And without noticing, without planning, all these observations have affected me to the extent that made me write about it and study it and contemplate it. Uh, in a way that I will let other people to benefit uh, from these observations. And when I started my career job uh, in media communication and social marketing, actually uh, also I've met lots of people in the Arab world. And here where the comparison started, what stopped people from being universal? What is the connection between an Arab individual or an, an, an Indian individual and an American or a European? And through studying these little details, here it comes. The, the whole thing started to be asking me, actually, to write them. And this was the drive for me to write. I wasn't planning to be an expert. I wasn't planning to be a writer. Or leadership but this is what happened it's all by coincidence and you know media uh, gives you also imagination is the mother of all sciences media and art where you can really maneuver among uh, obstacles to be creative to be a leader and the idea of universal leaders do you feel that Het has traditionally sort of excluded Arab intellectuals and individuals? What is global to you, and how do we encompass Arab intellectualism within that global context so that we can look at topics such as otherness in a different way? See, in, in the uh, Arab world, or what is called third world, people are hooked to the past. And uh, this is one of the obstacles that made people lack leadership skills or lose the traits of leadership they were born with. But leadership in the Arab world is being a politician or an officer in the army. Leadership is not acceptable if you're not a politician or an army officer. So what I want to build or to, to help people reach that leadership has nothing to do with politics or being uh, a member in the military groups. On the contrary, leadership is in business, uh, in your family, in your career, being creative, period. This is leadership. And Charisma Code sort of treats the subjects you're talking about and broaching in a very thoughtful manner. But one of the things that I want that stood out for me was the fact that much of what you discuss isn't something we learn at school, nor is it something that our parents sort of bestow on us while we're growing up in, in various households. Do you feel that this book in some way is filling that gap for the reader? You know, Ramzi, life develops every day, every hour. And maybe uh, our parents didn't have these skills, or uh, maybe they, they have, 
the skills of leadership in their understanding or in their way in the past. But when, when life develops, needs to develop the skills and to develop the way of thinking of the skills. I mean, there are skills that were important in the past when people used to farm with their hands or fix things with their hands. But now life is a bit difficult and more developed, more sophisticated. Technology is all over. And if you want to deal with technology now, you have to have new skills of dealing with technology. And this is by itself is leadership. And those issues are being broached within the book. Yes, exactly. Because one of the things in technology, for instance, you need to reconsider the principle of patience, for instance, because uh, technology needs patience. Although technology is fast and quick, but at the same time it needs patience. Technology, it needs emotional intelligence because you have to deal with people remotely. Uh, you have to be to, to, to deal with people that you don't see, you talk, and if you lack the skills of emotional intelligence, uh, you won't be able to be a good communicator or a good leader or a good creative person uh, through, through technology. Uh, technology is very creative. If you don't think creative with the technology that is existing now, you will, you will lose it and you will not be able to adapt with the new development in the world. That's why most of the old people, they have difficulties dealing with new technology. And I don't want this to happen with the new old people like me and you. <laughs> and so the book was uh, originally published in Arabic with the same title, Charisma Code. Yeah. And as you just stated, the word charisma itself can take on many meanings that we went and to, to find out more about that we definitely want to uh, delve into the book but in terms of the Arabic translate uh, the Arabic publication when it appeared in print here in Jordan what was the reaction of people readers uh, your followers um, what was their reaction or raw reaction to the book actually the the reaction was was marvelous media uh, newspapers and with people that looking to understand what's charisma inside them mm. and uh, the charisma by itself was a promise to people to unveil the secret of the world the secret of the meaning of charisma charisma is, is a mysterious world so actually whatever you do if you unveil mysteriousness any word, people will come to you fast, mm. trying to understand mm. what did you mean by charisma code. This make people curious to see what is the mysteriousness in the word charisma, what is really charisma. Do you have any sort of concrete examples of, you know, uh, the Jordanian reading public or somebody who read the book? and who perhaps came and gave you their raw reaction or how the book helped them or how the book may have changed them without naming any names, yeah. obviously. But the book, in, in so many ways, enriches your life and enables you to get the skills that you didn't perhaps did not know you had. Do you have any such stories? Uh, yeah, one, one of the main stories actually is uh, was expressed by uh, a woman. Actually, she wrote on Facebook the following. She, she said that uh, all my life I thought charisma has to do with beauty and attractiveness mm. and style and being attractive. But now, from reading Charisma Code, I understood that charisma has nothing to do with beauty, but creates beauty. It does not build beauty, it creates beauty through creating so many factors in the way. And how do you feel when you know you read such a, uh, a comment or such a reaction to your work, knowing that that woman is not alone in the way you have changed her life through your work? Does it feel gratifying to you? Do you feel 
feel that you have managed to fulfill the goal you had when you published the book actually and make and make it available to the public at large. Anybody can really be happy if wittiness is in the middle. And this was a witty, uh, one of the wittiest uh, comments that I received. And that comment, of course, was in Arabic, since the book was only published in Arabic. Then, exactly. Which uh, enables me to segue into the marvelous English translation that is now available on Amazon, and that I strongly urge you to uh, download. Uh, you know, talking about technology, the fact that people can now have it on Kindle and read Maher Salami in the West. But I think the main question is going to be, Maher, as an American reader, how will this book help me? What can it do for me? It can help you help me because the book helped me as a writer too. And uh, one of the things that, uh, Ramzi, uh, life is, is too fast. We are too busy with so many things. And uh, what happens actually is when we think about charisma, about uh, inner peace, uh, creativity, we think about them when we are walking in a corridor, when we are uh, having a cup of coffee. I mean, we don't really sit and think about a concept and research and look for it and look at the true understanding of, of the concept. That's why Charisma Code or, or other books, uh, Personality Glamour or uh, Energy and Dignity, all these books just makes you stop, relax, and think about something deliberately, not by constant. And it's more than just a passive guide, isn't it, Mayer? I mean, this book sort of includes dialogues, quizzes, reflective questions that can, that people can ask themselves in order to be able to go through this, what I'm going to call loosely a transformation. Do you feel that this is sort of the kind of approach that needs to be taken when somebody is publishing a book of this caliber. Actually, I'm a speaker on leadership and trainer also. And what as I was trying to do in these books is to imitate in a way or simulate a training program in a whole and put it in a book. So when you read the book, Actually, you are being trained, self-training. Uh, this was my concept. Yeah. And so it's going to appeal to American readers. Of course. Because it's not so geographical. Of course. And it's got a new sense of globality. This will help an American to understand an Indian, to understand a European, to understand a Korean, to understand an Arab. This is the cross-cultural approach of this book. And it's all available in uh, Charisma Code, which is now available yes. on, on Amazon. Amazon. Exactly. And which I personally urge you to read. It's actually on, uh, it's got a special discount right now. So I think within the next two weeks, uh, hopefully if people can discover it, they can take advantage of even the discounted price uh, of, of course, the book. Of course, and I wish them all the best <laughs> by reading and uh, I'm, I'm expecting uh, feedback actually. Uh, yeah, exactly. I love to hear some feedback. Uh, exactly, and as, as I said in the introduction, you know, a lot of people will write to the Herbology show with questions, with suggestions, with, you know, criticisms even. And those will be forwarded to Maher Salami, who I'm sure will take the time to respond to these American readers and create a dialogue with the purpose of enriching their life in a global way. Ramzi, one of the things that um, I dream of, that the book will reach Oprah Winfrey, because I consider her, she as a colleague in this research, through viewing her videos and her comments, her quotes, and um, I think one of the people that really can understand this book and be enthusiastic about it is Oprah Winfrey. I tend to agree, especially with the Oprah Book of the Month Club. Exactly. where she tends to look at books that deal with spirituality, leadership, concepts of otherness. So anybody out there who may know Oprah, feel free to pass that along. I mean, I'm, I'm just throwing the, uh, the wish in the air, hoping that it will reach her somehow. This is energy. Energy.